slashing your tires, keying your cars, shitting on your doorstep. These are just some examples of the crazy things that ex-girlfriends can do. What is your craziest experience with an ex? Put it in the comments below. So without further ado, grab a blanket, turn off your lights for true, scary, mentally disturbed ex-girlfriend horror stories. Brother's Ex-Girlfriend My brother met his girlfriend a year ago when he was 17 and she was 16. For a little while, they seemed like they had a great relationship. My brother Alan and Jamie were always happy together, and Jamie made a real effort to get to know the rest of the family. However, I noticed something was off whenever my brother wanted to go out with his friends without Jamie, and she would have a complete meltdown screaming about how he didn't love her and how much she does for him, etc. This happened all the time, so eventually, he started spending more time with her to avoid conflict. She even got annoyed at my mother's funeral because he wasn't paying enough attention to her. Like, what the fuck? Our mother just died. Chill out, bro. Things started to get worse with her accusing him of hitting her whenever he would try to deflect from her, punching him in the face. My brother has some mild anxiety problems, and guilt about her mother's death, since they weren't on the best of terms before she died. He uses Xanax or bars to self-medicate, which she knows, and often would pick fights with him to use his actions against him later on, or try to tell the school he was on something to get him in trouble when he didn't want to have anything to do with her. Eventually, Alan couldn't take it anymore, and ended the relationship a few days ago. A quick note, our glass back sliding door is pretty weak. If you yank at it hard enough, you can force it open despite it being locked, unless we put the key in. So the other day, she showed up at 5 in the morning, bang on the door, and demanding to be let in. My dad got after her, and she left. This morning, however, she broke in through the back door and got into bed with my brother, who slept through all of this. My dad found her and told her to leave, or he'd call the police. This afternoon, I heard my brother and his friend get back in from school. All was well until once again Jamie broke in through the back door, as she had taken the key this morning. Alan's friend stopped her from going into his room, and I told her to leave and not come back, or I was going to call the police. After she had left, my dad came back with three new keys made for the back door. My brother showed us her claims of cutting herself, which we reversed imaged and found it immediately, along with the fact that she didn't have any cuts on her arms. I mean, it's gotten so bad that my brother doesn't want to go to school since she follows him around and tries to get him to talk to her, which, when that does not happen, she's trying to get him in trouble. Honestly, Jamie, I hope you get out of our lives and get the help that you desperately need. My ex from 10 years ago is still following me. About 10 years ago, when I was 14 years old and just had started to realize I was a lesbian, a beautiful girl I barely knew asked me out. I was just thrilled to be noticed and have someone want me. So I ignored the fact that I didn't really know her that well and she kind of gave off a cold, distant, creepy vibe that was in direct conflict with my spunky and warm attitude. I figured that there was no way she would ever hurt me, especially since she was a woman. I had never heard of a woman abusing another woman. I was ridiculously naive. I know that now. A few weeks into the relationship, she started beating me when she didn't get what she wanted, even sometimes doing it in front of other people. No one did anything. They politely looked away. She started demanding I have sex with her, even physically forcing me to do so and threatening to kill me if I did not comply. It took a few months, but my fear of her was finally overridden by a desire to not be the girlfriend of some psychopath, so I dumped her and told my mother, her parents, the police, and everyone who has been around us what she had done. My ex swore she would kill me. Those were the last words she said to me. My parents believed me, her parents believed me, the police believed me, but I wound up not pressing charges after realizing how unlikely it was that she would even serve time. However, 
She got all her friends, they all sided with her, and I wound up having to change schools. Soon, we moved to a different city, I got the help I needed, and I felt like a changed person. I moved back to the same city where I met my ex when I started college. It's a huge state university with more than 50,000 students, but I figured I'd probably never see her and knowing her, it was unlikely that she even went there. She was an actress and a singer, and I figured that she had probably gone to a school known for those things. My college was known for science and infamous for having very underfunded art program. On the very first day though, I, I saw her. I felt a cold stare on the back of my neck and turn around and she was there, 100 feet away from me, staring me down with a blank expression on her face. I glared at her and then sneered, trying to show her I wasn't afraid of her, and she kept the same cold expression. I turned and walked away at a relaxed pace and tried not to let it ruin my day. But then it started. Everywhere I went, she was 100 feet away. Sometimes she was with some of her friends, and they would all stare at me with the same blank expression. I never engaged them. I never spoke to any of them. Eventually, they even started following me when I wasn't on campus. It got to the point where I couldn't enjoy a day at the mall, a date with my girlfriend, a trip to the zoo, or even buy groceries without a dead-eyed girl who beat the shit out of me when I was 14 and her weird crew staring at me. They look like friggin' zombies, it's creepy. I even catch other people giving them freaked out looks when they see them. It's been six years since she started following me around. I thought about moving or changing schools, but I know I can't let her ruin my life anymore. It's starting to get creepier and creepier though. Sometimes, someone knocks loudly on my door and when I go to answer it, there's no one there. But I have the sinking feeling in my stomach that it is her. Sometimes, random numbers in my area code leave messages of silence for about 30 seconds on my phone or I get text messages from random numbers asking who is this. I never respond to the texts or voicemails and immediately block the number of the senders. I don't know what to do. I know I'm not cracking up. If I'm ever out with other people and I think I see her, I ask if they do too and they always say yes. I wanna call the cops. I wanna fight back. I wanna do something to prove I'm not a pushover. But really, I just want to put this all behind me. That's all I've ever wanted. Creepy ex from 10 years ago, please let's not, let's not meet again. Edit, just a few things I forgot to mention. I'm in a graduate school now. I graduated college in four years. I go to a different university now in an online IT program. I only still live in the same city because my family is here. I've taken self-defense classes and carry pepper spray around me also. Changing where I shopped helped and I haven't seen her in a little while. But the messages still happen sometimes. If I ever see her again, I'm gonna get a restraining order against her at the very least. Update. I haven't seen this girl since I posted this, and I heard from someone else that she moved to New York City recently. I have no idea if this is true, but it feels nice to not have to stay in my house for weeks. Luckily, my neighbors seem aware of my situation somehow, and they look out for me. In addition, I think it is worth noting that, recently, my girlfriend and I had a jar of pee thrown at us when we were exiting a store. The car drove away so quickly we didn't catch the license plate. I'm not sure if it's related, but it could have been someone who knows her. It was a white guy in a red and black van. That's all we know. I don't know if my ex-girlfriend's best friend really existed. Okay, so this all happened about three years ago or so. I was around 17 years old. I'm not gonna dramatize anything, but let me go ahead and say I think personally that this is a pretty bizarre story. There are some details about my actual relationship I'm going to leave out. I kind of want an answer to the story in question but I don't think I'll ever get one. I've been wanting to get some outside opinions on it aside from friends and family too, though. So here it goes. My ex, Jane, and I lived about an hour away from each other. We met at a park out of state and ended up living kinda close. We hit it off and dated a month after we met. 
Our entire relationship lasted a year, and she was my first girlfriend. From the very beginning of the relationship, she would discuss her best friend named Patrick. He was in his late 20s, she as a reminder was 17 years old, and worked in a bookstore. He lived in her town, and she had known him since she was 13. From very early on, I thought the stories she would tell me about him were outlandish. She would talk about watching him get into bar fights with a guy that went by Hammer, how once they pretended to rob a, g a gas station but left money behind on the counter and had to jump off a roof to escape security in which Patrick broke his ankle. Another time, Patrick got a brand new Mustang and they wanted to crash into a lake so they jumped out at the last second. You get the idea. The stories she told seemed clearly exaggerated or downright fake. Part of me, though, thought she was just trying to impress me for whatever reason. Now, here are some important facts that I don't exactly know where to put, so I'll lay them out here. Number one, Jane was an artist. She drew all the time in her journal. She rarely drew people as they actually were. She drew people as monsters or animals. For example, she always drew me as a giraffe. She was good at it. Number two, Patrick's last name, according to her, was pronounced and spelled a certain way. Willington. Patrick Willington. Number three, Patrick's dad owned a successful company out of state that Patrick would inherit. Number four, Jane had a much, much older brother, who was in his late 20s as well, that had joined the military and moved to Korea. She saw him only every few years or so. Okay, now continuing. Jane would tell me that Patrick was very protective of her. She would tell him about me, and he would always be unsure of what he thought. She said he wanted to beat me up sometimes, and that he'd hurt me if I hurt her. If she told him about something silly I did, he'd think I was an idiot and call me stupid. He also thought I was gay. This, all of course, secondhand information. Never once in the entire relationship did I think I spoke to him. I'd also like to remind everyone that this was my first relationship. I was very insecure, very confused, and there was more going on in it that complicated some things. I did not have the best rationality. The thing is, I really didn't have a reason not to believe her, you know? She had no reason to lie about any of this, but I was still skeptical. Sometimes, Jane would go to Patrick's house really late at night, she'd say. She said she slept on his couch and that he'd literally throw her out of the house in the morning. Sometimes she said she had to sneak out of her house to go to his. He lived within walking distance, apparently. One time, later in the relationship, Patrick invited her out on an outstate trip back to his hometown. They were going to stay in a mountain cabin for a week. I was not happy about that. I was more upset when she said she wouldn't tell her parents and that they'd leave on a bus in the morning. Now. At this point in the relationship, I was very unsure of what exactly was going on with this Patrick person, but Jane said that if I told her parents about this trip, she wouldn't be able to go, and that Patrick would hate me, and she'd be pissed as well. It was important to her because Patrick apparently would be forced to move away soon to work at his dad's company, and she said she'd never see him again, so she needed to go. Well, when the day came for her to leave, Patrick never showed up to get her or whatever. She was very upset, even though he'd be back in town one more time. Oh, and another tidbit. Jane's parents never once mentioned Patrick, ever. She never brought him up around them either. The only time she mentioned Patrick to anyone was to my dad once after we broke up. She told my dad one of the outlandish stories I mentioned. My dad was flabbergasted, basically. I had told them all about this but hearing it in person was crazy. Patrick was going to have a birthday party once. I was invited. It was going to be at his house starting at midnight. I said I couldn't go to that, but that I'd get him a present. I got him some toolkit thing she said he'd like, and I gave it to her for him. She said she brought it, and that he in fact did like it. She said the party lasted until 6 a.m. Patrick sent me a text from her phone once when she was with him, it was standard behavior for him. He said I was a pansy or something and that he'd beat me up. That was early on in the relationship. Now, here is where I think things get very interesting. Jane lived nearby an elementary school. 
She walked me there and said his house was close to it. So she leads me to the back of the school where there is woodland. She brings me to the edge of the woods and has me look in. I see this very old wooden tin house sort of structure. It has broken windows. It's filthy. It's falling apart. The path to it is covered by bushes and trees. She said that that, that was his house. I asked if she was joking. She said no, and that he wasn't very tidy even when he lived there. I, I thought briefly that maybe the house was just weird looking on the outside, but actually good inside. But there was no way it was. It was abandoned. Anyways, that same day, she asked if I wanted to go inside. It was hot, getting dark. No one knew where exactly we were, and I didn't want to get cut up or by bushes or go into that sketchy house at all. So I said maybe another time. She insisted, saying that Patrick wanted us to check on things, but eventually gave up. This was very close to the end of our relationship. I asked her a few more questions, like, So you went through those bushes and stuff every time you went to see him? And she said yes, but that they were overgrown since he left. I also asked how he drove out of his house, how anyone visited him otherwise, how he got mail. She eventually realized that maybe I didn't exactly believe her and got mad. I said I was sorry and that it was just different to me. She insisted it was true. I let it go. Well, we ended up breaking up shortly after, but I had a hard time coping with the breakup and ended up speaking with her again later. She was on a bus with her class to go on some trip while well, I lost connection with her and called back. A young man answered. I asked who it was. He said, Patrick Willingson. Not Willington. Willingson. So I opened up with a question about his last name, and also why he had her phone. He said that that was always his last name. He said he was on his office phone. I kept asking him questions about himself that only the real Patrick would know. I heard noises in the background. He would pause for a minute before answering. I think she just handed the phone to a classmate and told him what to say, frankly. That's the only real answer to that. Well, he hung up and I called her back. Jane answered and said that Patrick told her I somehow got connected to his phone since he was in her recent contacts or something. Clearly BS. But I played along, asking one more time about the last name, to which she had no idea what I was talking about saying it was always Willingson, and left it at that. Oh, and he wanted to beat me up, of course, badly, for breaking her heart. Well, I kept speaking to her for a week or two, and we both finally got closure about the relationship, but as I was recounting this experience with a friend, I realized something. Probably just a creepy coincidence, but I had said Jane was an artist, and that she always drew people as other things. Well, I so many drawings of Patrick. She said he always wore this dark coat and ripped pants or something. She, as usual, didn't draw him as a human. She drew him as a skeleton. It really creeped me out for whatever reason when I remembered that. I may be forgetting some other weird things that happened, but that's the main stuff. Now, to tie it all together, here's some stuff I've done about it since. I tried using Google Earth to look at where his house was since I remember exactly where she showed me. The trees are too thick to see in, and there is construction nearby, so it may not even be there anymore. I have not gone back in person, since it is so far away and also close to her house. I have googled and researched in countless ways Patrick's name, both names, and anything I can remember. No useful results. She used to mention him on social media sometimes. A friend of mine, who had trouble grasping all of this, found her profile and saw him mentioned, recently too. I have a few theories. Number one, Patrick was just some sort of imaginary friend character she made to fill the place of her much older brother who moved away and she didn't see often. Her brother and Patrick were the same age after all and kinda had similar personalities. Number two, it was all BS. She made up for whatever reason to impress me sometimes, to coerce me other times. Number three, it was part of a much greater disorder or problem, which is possible. Jane had other issues that I will not disclose, so it isn't impossible. Number four, 
Patrick did exist in some way, shape, or form, but she highly, highly exaggerated him and rarely saw him. So, she told me whatever she wanted about him. It may not be as creepy to all of you since you're outside of my social circle, but like I said, that's why I'm posting. To me, personally, I am bothered by this. Jane had a tendency to be very violent and say threatening things. Now why did she make all it up? Why did she show me that house and say it was his? What was in the house? Regardless of if anyone lived there, did she actually go in? Like she said she did? Did she sleep there sometimes? Or visit late at night, like she said? If so, what in the world was she doing? Did someone really somehow live there? Why did she draw him as a skeleton? Why did he have such strong feelings about me? Why did she change his last name? Why did she do that weird thing with the phone and the classmate? How many of her other loved ones know about this? What would have happened if I went in that house with her? Some of this is probably heightened by my anxiety, but I do think it's a weird story. I plan on using it for a fictional story one day and of course, changing some stuff for it. But anyways, thanks for listening.